Welcome, this is Laurie of Laurie's Heirloom Sewing. I just put my phone in airplane mode. I, I can't even begin to describe the number of times that I have had to start and stop this video today. It's just crazy. So what I'm gonna try to do is just, instead of having it be in little segments, I'm gonna try to catch you up to where we are right now. This part I will actually post the entire zipper pull and, and installation, etc., etc. I'm not going to try to zing through this too fast. But I've tried to start this and had to stop. I don't even know how many times due to texts and phone calls and texts and phone calls. So I'm just going to start as though I hadn't started before. Rant over. So this is, we're, we're working on this, the KWIT Design McCall's M5822. We're doing this medium-sized bag. And this is basically, I've lost count, maybe less than three. There were supposed to be two. I have been going through the pattern step by step by step, answering basically the questions about each of those steps. I think, I hope, that's what's been going on. We are currently at this where we're making this pocket right here. This is the inside lining pocket. There are two. So you create your pocket, you flip it inside out, you, you top stitch across the top right there, and then you put it on the lining piece within the guidelines on the pattern. So we're marking the pattern. Now, often people will just try to go through the pattern and that does sometimes work, but it also weakens your pattern and you end up with a pattern that's a little bit shredded. Now you can also just retrace your pattern, create it again. Um, I typically will just put my hand, <clears throat> excuse me, put my hand down or pin it, whatever works the best for you. And I find if I actually, if I use my thumbnail, I can just take this heat erase marker and kind of, you know, draw like this and then do that again. You can, you know, Give yourself some good guidelines. Mark the dots at the top because that's the true mark right there. That has nothing to do with the seam allowance, which the pocket piece is not the correct size because it has the, those uh, seam allowances added. So once you have your two dots drawn and that area right there where your thumbnail was, then you can just attach those you know, with your heat erase marker, draw in pretty much where that pocket is supposed to go. Okay. The most important, I mean, you can kind of fudge where the pocket goes, but the most important marking is going to be the placement line for this top piece right here. So what I do is when I have a little bit more space, I will put my pattern piece on each of the pattern, or the, each of the pieces of fabric, take a straight ruler, I'm kind of cramped here, put that down, line it up, make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. This is wobbly because it was wound up in the move. So that's why I've got that awful wave in it. Okay. And then draw, make sure that you draw your line. Um, use chalk, use a heat erase pen and do both pieces. Where's the other one? Right there. <clears throat> you really want both pieces to be marked because your top has to fit 
um, <clears throat> identically on both the top and the bottom. I mean, the, the front and the back lining. Okay. So, get that lined up. And then I've slid, but it's very difficult to work on a wavy surface. I do need to heat repress this to get it flat okay and then if you're not sure you know you can line them up side by side and kind of make sure that the lines are where they need to be I would so much rather do it this way make sure take the time make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be then have to unpick stitches I that would drive me nuts okay so now where these instructions are going to get a little bit complicated is, well, there's a couple spots. This is simple enough. You're going to turn in the seam allowance on both ends <coughs> of your top pieces, the short end, and you're going to turn in the lower edge of each top piece. The reason they say lower edge is because you might have a print that's directional. And if you did, for example, this, the word autumn is facing this way and the word autumn is facing this way. So they're basically opposite of each other. Um, the pumpkins are facing this way or their little pumpkin bottoms are down here. And on this side, they're over here. So you have to watch out for that direction and that's why it's called the lower edge. So you're gonna do that and then you're gonna press all of them down. I do recommend that you press in the two short sides first and then this long edge. It tends to hold a little bit better. Um, for the medium, you're gonna to need to shorten the zipper. It tells you how in instruction number 18 and you wanna make sure that your zipper is correctly sized, so you just measure and then shorten it. Or, like me, you just use a lace zipper. Okay, you need to whip stitch across the upper end of the zipper. So up here where the zipper pull is, is called the upper edge. So you would need to whip stitch this together. If you're doing a zipper installation like the one in the instructions and I will read these but this is the the installation that I prefer with these little lace zippers I think they're really cute on a bag so next you are going to put right sides together and you're going to center one side of the zipper tape over the upper seam line on one top section. Okay, we already know that this is the lower edge. So the upper edge is going to be Okay, so basically I needed to get another piece of fabric to show you what the instructions are talking about because we already had already stitched down or, or folded and pressed down, excuse me, the lower edge, which is what I'm demonstrating here. So that supposedly is uh, pressed, folded and pressed under along that edge. So then what their instructions tell you to do is take your zipper face down. So the right side of the zipper is on the right side of the fabric, on the raw edge, not the folded edge, but on the raw edge, okay? And then you're going to, um, I, basically they want you to baste it right along this edge. Again, I feel like that's a waste of thread. And what I would do if it were me is I would just pin this down momentarily. All right, so what your what your goal, your end game here is this piece of the zipper tape right here, this side of the zipper tape 
is meant to be enclosed in this piece of fabric like this. Now I realize this is a massive zipper that I'm demonstrating this with. It's for a jacket. I don't think you would use this for a bag, especially a medium sized bag. I suppose you could, but it's extremely heavy. It's a very, very heavy zipper, but it's the only zipper I currently have that's not a lace zipper. So anyway, getting back to that, um, I would just kind of create this little pocket and sandwich my zipper inside. Basting might be a good idea. Um, you might be able to even hold it in place with some 505 uh, spray. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to pin it because the pins are now buried in the fabric. So the only way to pin it would be to fold and press both of these edges down. And rather than just one, fold this one down, center this side of your zipper so it's, it's well, we're gonna have to flip this over so that we got right sides together like this. I'm kind of confusing my own brain. Yeah, so no, that would not work. We would have to do it because you're, the end game here is that you're going to be enclosing each side of your zipper in this little folded fabric piece. So if they're folded and they're pressed correctly, I'm gonna open this. This is what it would look like when you are done with your stitching. Okay, just gonna pin it down. So I guess in, oh, this pin's horrible, in um, looking at it, if what you end up with when you follow step number 20 in this pattern does not look like this, then it's not correct. And then you want the exact same thing for the second side. So your second top piece would of course be stitched on the short side or pressed on the short side and then you're just gonna press these two long edges in and then catch your zipper within those folds like this and stitch down so that raw edges are completely encased. I guess I'll try to Okay. Okay. And then Hold that one down. If they were pressed, it would be so much easier to do, but I'm, I'm being stubborn and not pressing. <laughs> I'm just kind of having one of those moments and I, I feel so bad. I just watched the lady across the street have a moment. I know how she feels. And I, I honestly, I would have gone to her aid, but it was one of those, I could just see it on her face. Just don't, don't come near me. I'm, I'm gonna go in the house and ouch, watch TV and 
drink coffee and eat chocolate. So I'm leaving her alone, but I am kind of keeping an eye on things. So anyway, at the end of the day, this is what your zipper top installation should look like. So you should have two pieces of fabric with a folded short end pressed, folded in, folded in, and then basically just stitched along your zipper. And that's the top. But Laurie being Laurie, as many people know, doesn't really go for that. All right, so I love these lace, little lace zippers. I think they're adorable. They look really cute on a purse. I don't think I'd use this color, but I'm using it because it's the color of the thread that was in my showing showing machine this morning, sewing machine. So while the top is basically created differently in step 20, 21, and 22, you could essentially decorate this however you would want to with your top stitching it's not necessary but this this installation right here is basically not at all the installation in the instructions but it works for me so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about so at this point you would take your whole entire zipper installation and flip it upside down so that you've got right sides together. This one would be stitched right here along this raw edge on the placement line. I'm going to use pins to replicate this. Okay. So once it's stitched, and I know that's a pin, but we're going to pretend it's stitching, this is what it would look like right here. Keep in mind, this part right here will be on the inside of your bag. Okay, so then you're going to really get confused because this piece will be, oh, let's see. Yeah, this will be folded on the fold line. That's that's what you've basically done. You've created your fold line that is not explained here. So you've got your seam allowance and you're gonna press that under. Then this piece comes around and you're going to attach on the placement line and you'll see why in just a moment and there are I, by the way there are several ways that you can kind of manipulate this bag if you're um, you know if you're not interested in all this fussy fussy stuff um, there's, I've done it in my mind so many times differently. Okay. I have this upside down. Yeah. Okay. It is. It's upside down. This goes on the inside. I do this every single time and I think I'm right, but I'm glad that it messed up that time. I'm sure you're out there thinking to yourself, what is she doing? Trust me, when you're in the minute, sometimes it can just about drive you crazy. Okay, so I, what I want is... <laughs> oh my goodness. I was thinking about the lady across the street and what she just went through. And I, I still, oh my goodness, my heart just breaks for her. Because I'll just say it was one of those embarrassing moments that we have all had. 
Trust me, I know we have all had them. Okay, so, right. So we fold our little edge down here. We put this along this placement line. The, the drawing in the directions is the absolute opposite of what I am doing. And that's why I, I fell for this again. <laughs> so it's showing you right side, right side. This is, this is being shown right side out. But in order to get this on that placement line, I found this to be a much better way I wanted this folded under and on my installation because there is supposed to be a piece of fusible interfacing on here um, I did do a zigzag stitch along this edge and this is what you are supposed to be seeing right here you are supposed to see this like this okay so then this one then has basically the same insulation and that's why it looks okay wait a minute right yep nope <laughs> oh my goodness gracious so these two face each other yeah here we go here we go yay All right. That's correct, that's correct, okay. I think honestly that it does help me if I just have the fabric prepared because once I see that zigzag stitch along that raw edge, I suddenly know what it is that I'm trying to do. Now my pins would be my stitches in this particular case and my stitches would be on that placement line. So, you know, you, you do have to watch for that when you're putting, when you're stitching along here. All right, one more. Okay. Now I know that this looks absolutely, insanely incorrect, however, it's not incorrect. The outer portion of your bag is covering this. And of course you have your um, side and bottom section. And then when you open your bag, what you see is the inside. So while it looks confusing, it's best just to tell yourself in the process of making this bag, when I unzip the top, I will be looking at the inside. And there will, of course, be pockets sewn on the inside of your bag. So that is why this is probably the most confusing um, application right here is just getting this, this, and these two pieces where they're supposed to be. All right, if you've come this far, you are so close to being done because now you have your lining and your top and your zipper and the lining pockets are all done and the outer edge is the next thing to do. So again, we're gonna stay stitch like we did over here. We're gonna stay stitch piece 11. It should have some fusible interfacing. And then you're going to pin the side lining to the sides and the lower edges of the front and the back lining sections. So we got the front and the back lining sections. We've got piece 11. And it's that wide piece of fabric that joins this to this. I, I beg your pardon with all this stuff. So that's what that is. It's that big wide piece of fabric that attaches the lining front to the lining back and the lining front bottom to the, you know, it's just that big 
wrap around piece right there. So you just stitch along and um, you're going to attach it so that right sides are together like this. The outside is facing out. You do not turn this lining section right side out. The lining section remains right side in. That's all you got to remember. The lining section remains right side in. All right, so this is what it should look like from the top. I find that drawing very confusing. I know what it is that they're trying to depict, but it is an extremely confusing drawing. Um, this is supposed to be the round, the outer edge. This is supposed to be the side. And of course, this is the top and your zipper. It's still very confusing. Excuse me, I just kicked my camera stand. So now, Here's where I'm going to beg and plead with you to find a way to use, borrow, buy, don't steal, but some clips like this or hair barrettes or binder clips, anything. Because when you pin the front and all that buckram and fleece and interfacing and fabric, to this, there's this very, very thick and stiff side edge that you have to sew. And pins, are they're looking for an opportunity. Trust me, um, it's, it's a very ugly, ugly thing. I hope that you won't use pins. But if you do, just please be very, very careful. Because while you can hurt your sewing machine, I'm, I'm just really more concerned. I really, really suffered a lot of physical pain when I made that first bag and did not have clips. It was, it was torture. So while it says pin the ends of the top sections to the side lining, please clip it. And you're going to center along the placement lines and matching the small circles. And then you're going to stitch close to the ends of the side lining. Then you're going to place this on the inside of the bag. As is. The inside of the bag. It's going to fit right down inside. The bag has been turned right side out. The lining remains right side in. You push this down inside and now you've got the... Um, fleece and buckram touching this and this is what is on the inside of your bag. You are going to clip that all together. If you baste the upper edges together it makes it really really easy. All you're going to do is go around the top. You're not, you do not have to stitch these together. Everything just kind of pushes down in there. The only stitching after you get the lining inside the bag is around the top of the bag, which would be this right here. And then along those side edges and then this and along that side edge. And you're done putting the two together. Make sure that you keep your straps out of the way when you're doing that around the top. Okay, then you are going to have created your binding. You either bought it or you made it. Piece number three, I think, is the... No, piece number eight. Piece eight is the binding. And um, let's see if I can find it. It's, um, it should be cut on the bias. So if you go to purchase a piece of binding, make sure it's a bias binding and it will work beautifully. If you cut it, cut it on the bias. That's a 45 degree slant on your fabric. A lot of rulers will have a 45 degree line 
I am so sorry that I can't seem to locate that piece. Ah, oh, here it is, right here. Okay, so right here, this is the width of the binding for this bag. And it should be cut on the bias. I'm not sure that the pattern ever says that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you that you should. Um, there's a lot of really great videos out there on how to cut bias binding. But if you don't cut it on the bias, it will still work. It's just going to... It might wrinkle a little bit as you're going around the curves. You might find that it's just a little bit puffy and wrinkly in some of those, those areas. So if you want perfect, then cut it on the bias. Does it tell you here? No. I'm looking for anything. It just says grain line and that would be this way. Um, that's a judgment call, I guess. So to, the way to make the binding after you get it cut is you're going to fold it in half and press it. And then you're going to fold one raw edge toward that fold. And then the other raw edge toward that fold. And then fold that in half again and then press. And that is what ends up being the width of your bias binding right there. And that fold goes along the top lining and the top of the bag. And then you put it on the outside and go around and stitch it. And then you fold it into the inside and you complete it so that it's over the top part of both the bag lining and the bag. And it will close over, pretend that's both, it will close over that. At that point, your bag is done. You have completed the pattern, you've completed the project, and you should be very, very, very proud of your accomplishment. Now, if there are, um, if you want the easy way to make this bag or a similar bag, let me know. I have done this a couple of times and I've made other bags and I, prefer a different lining installation and creation. So um, if you like the shape of this bag, we can certainly work with that. Um, if you want a zipper in the top, we can certainly work with that. Um, we just can do it a little bit easier with a little bit less hair pulling and need for chocolate um, or you know whatever you prefer on a day when you're trying to sew and things just aren't working out. Thank you again so much for joining me. Um, I would love to hear from you. I always love to hear from you. Um, today is Opportunity Monday. Um, because I've done this video today, I think I'm going to, I might do an Opportunity Monday video um, a little bit later today. I don't know. It kind of depends. I need to take my puppy out for a walk. Um, so yeah, I might and I might not. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, thank you again so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and um, we'll meet up again sometime. Thank you.